G'day ZGD here and welcome back for part 2 of the Arc Age Survival Guide. In part 1, we made our character, went through the character generation process, talked about classes, uh, talked about the different racial abilities, starting factions, and we did a bit of UI setup and settings and things like that. But now we're in game and time to actually get into some gameplay. In this episode I'm going to be talking about questing and combat for beginners, including basic skill setup and use questing, basics, uh, underachieving, overachieving and hidden quests, some of the more slightly advanced features, and navigating the world in general, as well as sort of just navigating your way around uh, quests somewhat efficiently, in a somewhat efficient manner. Because there's, uh, you can kind of just amble around without thinking too much about it, but there is some pretty efficient ways to go about questing and to maximize the XP for time that you get out of action doing them if you're into that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Okay, so we're going to begin off uh, just with, we picked up this quest from the signpost here. These are usually just kill something quests. They're kind of like bounty quests. Now the first thing you want to know is you can actually click on any of these quests here and uh, it'll bring up your quest log. I believe uh, J also brings it up. Actually, it's not J. Oh, I, I never use it because I always just click on it. There we go. It's L for quest log. It brings that up as well. But generally, I just click the quick click the actual quest that I want to take a look at, and you can see your description, including your reward and things like that. Sometimes it is actually handy to either read in here or to mouse over it and see what it actually says in there. This one's pretty basic. Kill the souls read foxes on the Deserine Peak. Now, sometimes uh, quests will have you have to use a certain item in a certain way on a certain monster at a certain time of day. So uh, it is handy if you're sort of scratching your head how to actually go about doing the quest to mouse over and read that text. That's definitely been very helpful for me. And uh, the, because these are the sort of tutorial beginning ones, it has some orange text tips there. Now you can abandon these quests if at any time you've sort of progressed beyond that zone. It's often not worth going back and doing lower level quests, so simply clicking up abandon is a good thing to do. You'll also notice that we have these one and two symbols just here. Now these point your way towards your quest on your character, so you don't need to refer your map. In fact, you, you can even turn your map off if you so desire. You can go to uh, view mini map. You can check, uncheck that if you like to uh, sort of just uh, progress around just following your little arrows. And sometimes if you're in sort of a like a city or something like that, trying to navigate your way around buildings, this will help point you in the correct direction. Now the current one, we can actually click on here and go to map. And it'll actually show and flash the actual quest we have here, which is the Kill Souls Red Foxes. Now, this is incredibly obvious. You're probably sitting here looking at that right over there, so you can go kill them. But uh, it's handy stuff to know, to know how to navigate these various different things. And if you, uh, if you want to sort of give yourself a bit more of an indication of where these guys might be or where you want to head, for, for example, you could be like, all right, I want to mark the map there. Or you can actually just shift click to do it there. And uh, I believe just shift clicking it again, or just clicking it again removes that. Oh, right clicking and clicking delete, that's right. Okay, cool. So let's begin things off with killing some of these basic souls read foxes. We just have one very basic ab ability at the moment, but these are incredibly easy to kill. So I'm just simply going to hold my button and wreck their faces. And uh, we're nice and easy. Oh, and we achieved level two. Hurrah! We actually don't get anything on this level. You'll see that if we go to combat here, we have not actually achieved any skill points or anything like that. The way uh, skill points are rewarded in uh, Arc Age is every fifth level you get skill points, and then every third level after that. So, at level three we should get a skill point, and at level five we should get a skill point, and at level eight we should get a skill point, and at level 10 we should get a skill point, and so on and so forth. Now we can actually press G to examine the contents of the items that have dropped. We can see Shining Earth and Dream and all that take all, but I recommend just pressing F, which is automatic take all, so we can just go ahead and do that there. So I'm actually just gonna drag over a few of these guys here. We don't have any AoE skills at the moment, but that'll be our strategy later on. It's not like these guys pre present all that much of a threat. Now, it'll be interesting to see if this early on I can actually show you guys underachieving and overachieving and hidden quests and things like that. What is actually here? We can dig up something. Oh, it is a small narcissist. Now, digging up will provide XP and spend some of your labor points. I'm gonna say, go ahead and do this. Now, you are depriving someone of resources and you are a scumbag for doing this. We just got some XP though, so we don't even care. But uh, what happens is if you dig up a plant early, like a potato plant before it has matured, you won't get any potatoes. All you do is spend some of your labor points. So you'll see that if we scroll up here, 
We used 10 labor points, which is actually a pretty large amount of labor points for digging something up, but we gained XP in uh, proportion to the amount of labor points that we spend. Now, another really important thing to note about this is labor points starts off at something like 1,000 and it caps out at 5,000, but to increase your max labor points, you need to use them as much as you possible. So early on, there's not many things you can spend labor points on, so go ahead and dig those plants up, chop down any trees or grab anything you find. Here is an iron vein. I can go ahead and mine this and we get to spend more of our labor points as well as start accruing some iron for later as well. Now you'll notice that all of these things that we've just grabbed have not been very obvious. The iron mine is probably the most obvious, but like the plant didn't really look that obvious and the tree just looked like a tree. The stuff in Arc Edge is actually just looks like part of the environment. So the best way to, to check these things out is to simply look around and mouse over stuff. And if it has a little cog icon, it means you can do something with it because these trees just here are parts of the scenery, but there are a lot of wild growing trees that you can harvest and they're not super obvious. There's one over there, young oak tree over there. One, if that was mature, we could chop it for wood and that is better value, but uh, I don't mind digging up some trees here, especially in the start area. Okay, so we have already completed our Souls Reed Fox hunting quest. And uh, I believe it already got the turn in, so we can't actually use that for the example. All right, it looks like we've already done that, so we'll actually have to progress on. I'm thinking some of the more advanced uh, features of questing, such as underachieving, overachieving, and hidden quests don't actually appear until a bit later on. Actually, we can probably test the whole hidden quest thing by simply killing some more foxes. So I'll take the chance to talk about this. There might not actually be hidden quests here. That's the nature of hidden quests, after all. They are actually hidden. But uh, there are additional quests that are just hidden around the world that you'll have to discover just by doing stuff in the world. And the most obvious and easiest to take advantage of these are additional hidden kill quests. Basically, you get like rep for uh, if you kill a large number of mobs in a certain zone. So although our quest only said to kill three souls or foxes, if we kill maybe ten, maybe there's a hidden quest there. And that's usually what I'll do, is I'll usually kill a few extra of each type of mob in a zone. I mean, it doesn't hurt you getting XP and items for doing it anyway. And uh, actually, uh, doing that can sometimes have the chance of giving a hidden quest, which gives about the same amount of XP as a normal quest. So you get basically a bit of double value there for the actual questing. And it looks like we actually leveled up while doing this too, so that's pretty nice. We have our first skill point upgrade. So I'm gonna go ahead into open skills here. And you see that the only thing we have available to us at the moment is Mana Force. This is one we will use in our build, so it's nice and easy. And uh, I'll go ahead and chuck that on there. We can't actually get anything else just yet. It's very basic right at the beginning, but you get a lot more freedom later on as we level up further. Now, Mana Force, I'm going to uh, drag down to here. And what I'm actually going to do now is rebind uh, some of these keys to some of my more easy to access keys. So I'm going to have something like Q and E. So these skills are very easy to use on there. So I'll go down to uh, shortcut bar and we're going to go number seven can be Q and number eight can be E. And later on we can do like control Q, control E, shift Q and shift E to give us even more options like that. So that switches that around there. Now I can actually unlock this and I might put this on Q. So that feels, feels a bit more natural. Now what this skill does just here, I will go through the skills for this character if you are playing along with this build. Mana Force, it deals damage and throws enemies away for you. It's very fun throwing other people and enemies off cliffs and things like that. Though do be aware if you do use that, uh, there is a chance this guy's maybe about to aggro on me. He saw the little flash around him, means that he's sort of spotted me. Uh, throwing things off cliffs can result in you not getting the loot. However, this also has a secondary effect, which will restore our mana. So I can try and use some of my mana here with Mana Stars. Mana Stars is very cheap though, so it's not a big deal. Massive lag spike! Uh-oh, that's concerning. Might be having some internet connection issues. But here we go, I'll use it here. And you'll see that you ink him away, but you may have also noticed that it restores our mana. So if you go over here, you can see shoves an enemy away, dealing 90 magic damage, restores mana equal to twice that amount. So you should use this skill as much as possible because it will help keep your mana up. Not a big concern right here early, but uh, it is nice if there are a few extra mobs on you. If you've aggroed one too many mobs, throwing one away can buy you a little bit of time as well. So it's a nice combination of CC damage dealing and mana res restoration there. So it's a nice utility skill to take advantage of. It does have a long cooldown though, so uh, just, just keep an eye on it every 60 seconds. Give it a go. Ah, we, we appear to have another character here. This is a good opportunity to talk about aggro and... Uh, basically credit for quests. So now you'll see that I hit this mob first. I now have, uh, I guess I have tagged this mob would be the way of saying it. And uh, if my friend over here, uh, Minim, attacks this fox, they won't actually get credit for it. Now we'll wait for them to attack a fox here. Hopefully they attack another one. Please be a good example for us. Looks like they're collecting fox entrails and things like that at the moment. There's a fox. Fight it. Fight it. 
Come on, you can do it. Here we go. Perfect. Now we can now select this, and you'll notice that the name is somewhat greyed out. It was only a brief second that it appeared there, whereas if I select this, it's perfectly red. So if you select a mob and it's somewhat greyed out, if you're a bit unsure whether it's been tagged or not, if it is if it is a bit more greyed out like that, that means the other person has tagged it, and you will re not receive credit for the kill. The way around this is if you're questing in an area, and you're killing a certain type of mob, and you know someone else is killing a certain type of mob, it's a good idea just to invite them to your party, so you can quest together. It's a nice way to make friends too. Alright, so I've killed a large number of foxes now, and there doesn't appear to be a hidden quest for fox foxes killing this early on. So I guess we will just continue on down the road. Now you can see on the map here there is an exclamation mark, and we can see that floating exclamation mark in the air there. This one is a green one, I'm pretty sure that just means it's part of the main, I guess, quest line. There's a compact bush. Search wild crops. Now you'll occasionally come across these other type of plants. These aren't your normal sort of plant, but searching them will yield seeds, sometimes very rare seeds as well. Corn seeds are not particularly expensive, so what I'm going to do is burn off some of my labor points just here. I'm going to plant my corn seeds, and then I'm simply going to dig them up. <laughs> It seems pretty weird, but this is a nice way of gaining some extra XP and spending some of our labor points. We use 10 labor points, gain 102 XP, burnt off some more of our labor points as we are trying to do. We're trying to use as many of those labor points as possible. So, there we go, we've got another quest there that we can accept. Looks like we're just continuing on now, we've got Listen to Terrian's uh, Prophecy, some storyline setting quests and things like that. So take your time through here if you like, get a, get a good idea of the storyline. Unfortunately in Alpha, the cutscenes are currently in Korean because they haven't been translated yet, but hopefully by the time you guys are playing, they will actually be translated. Now exclamation mark means quest receive, question mark means quest turn in, so this will be a turn in there and we get the XP and coin reward as well, so good stuff, exclamation mark means a new quest. Nui's tier reward for this one. Now this is an interesting point just here. This one here has a Nui's tier reward. Now if you're watching this series much later in the future, there's potential that this will actually change to Gildastar or another currency, or maybe it won't change at all, but there is talks about changing it. And uh, anything, any, anytime I talk about Nui's tiers or anything like that, feel free to translate it to whatever currency is currently relevant. And uh, <laughs> that is, that's just something that's going to change over time, and there's not too much we can do about that. So, first thing we can do is to pay attention to this thing here. This thing here is important. Deserene memory tone. I'm going to go into first person just to emphasize how important this thing is. Oh man, is this thing look important or what? Yes, it is. I'm going to press F on this, or just click on it, and I'm going to set our recall point here. Do this whenever you're in a new questing hub until you have a farm, and then you're going to set your farm hub or closest one to your farm as your recall point. The reason being is that you, if you ever want to go back to that place, it gives you a free, very fast way of getting back by simply using the recall skill here. I can use it now just for lols and recall back to exactly where I am and uh, essentially free. So uh, also, if you are Haranian, you can do it 30% more often as we discussed in the last episode. Yay! We're back exactly where we were. Actually, we kind of teleported from there to there. Everyone in the town is currently freaking out. Because why did that person just teleport like that? <laughs> okay, so we have Kill Souls Raid Boars, Boar Meat, another simple kill map quicks, quest. Only three on this one. And uh, should be nice and quick. We're going to shove this boar away and get out of here. The opposite of the uh, Mortal Kombat style, get over here. Get out of here. So we're going to take these guys down here. We're going to be getting leveled up very quickly. And uh, should just be getting like pretty general currency and um, potions and stuff like this from this one. You'll notice that we are actually starting to get quest items. The quests do a pretty good job of in, uh, introducing you to some of the basic things. This is interesting. Mana Stars is upgraded to rank 2. There are, there's a separate sort of progression system that happens when you level up within a skill mastery. So this one is now level 4. And at level 4, Mana Stars reaches rank 2. Now, depending on the skills, depends what this actually does. For Mana Stars, it probably just increases the damage. I can't see... You, sometimes it will actually say, like, uh, if we go over a few of these ones, we might see leveling up improves something or other. It doesn't always seem to say it. Not many of these ones seem to actually say what leveling does. But usually it's increasing damage or something like that. Something pretty basic. Some sort of increase like that. Get shoved. And uh, this will be our third nice kill there as well. Now we do have a few potions here. You can either sell these potions. There's, of, there's often not much of a need to actually use these potions this early on. And you will uh, get different tiers of potions pretty regularly as you're questing. But feel free to spam them. They're not worth all that much. Otherwise, just sell them at the vendor. 
So I'm going to kill some extra boars just to check if there's a hidden quest because I want to show this off to you guys as soon as it's available and hopefully me figuring this out where they're actually where this is actually available from, how lower level this is available from this will actually be helpful for you guys. Now you'll notice we have actually got something else here. From t sometimes from killing mobs, they'll drop coin purses of some description. Farmer's coin purse is like the lowest tier of these. Now you spend labor points to open this, which means you do get some experience and burn off some of your labor points, which as you should know by now, is a good thing. So we want to do this as much as possible, but we also get coins. So from this one, we got three silver, 26 copper. Now a really fun fact about these things is they actually have a small chance of you essentially winning the lottery. And I have seen people open coin purses albeit high level coin purses, but any coin purse has a chance of doing something like this. And I saw someone who opened a coin purse one that's, once that gave them 10,000 gold. That is actually an incredible amount of wealth from a bag, like many, many, many days of pro auction house trading just from one coin purse. So open these like crazy because there's a chance you could get lucky. But we just got three and four silver, which is still something pretty nice this early on. So also spy an iron mine vein. Train your eyes to see these things. And then go get them, because that is free XP, also free materials that will be very handy later on. And we can even convert the raw materials that we get into other materials to gain XP. You get XP for everything in this game, and it levels up your core professions and your base class level as well. So, it's a good idea to do all of this stuff pretty much as much as you can. Especially, as I said this early on, it's hard to find enough uh, things to do to spend all your labor points. And you'll see I'm actually having trouble spending my labor points as well. I'm unlikely to spend many on this character. I spy another iron ore vein sprinting to it. Aw, oh, yes. Training, I've trained my eyes pretty well to look for these uh, iron ore veins now, especially because I actually really love mining in this game, especially when you get into like competitive PvP mining, <laughs> which is actually a thing. There are PvP mining zones, and uh, they're a lot of fun, actually, I find. It reminds me of old-school RuneScape, kind of fighting over different iron ore nodes and then actually PKing each other. If you s steal each other's mind iron too often, later on people will actually fight over them. But it looks like I've killed a bunch of boars and no uh, hidden quests at this point. So I will keep testing this for your benefit, for science, so that you know when to actually start going ham on extra mob kills to uh, get those actual uh, bonus quests and things like that, as well as underachieving and overachieving. But it doesn't seem to be the case yet, so I'm going to go back and turn this quest in before we progress down the road, because it's actually a fair way down the road that we have to go yet. So, now we have a quest where we get to choose a reward. You'll get these every now and then, and we get to choose a dagger, sword, or katana, none of which are relevant for us, so I'm just going to pick any one. It really doesn't matter, and I'm just going to sell them to the vendor. So, uh, these ones are just basic white weapons as well, so they aren't worth anything uh, fancy like salvaging or anything like that. Hey, another coin purse. Opening it. What do we get? 77 copper. Oh, that's actually a very low amount. There we go, new quest as well. Sometimes new quests will appear after you do other quests, even from different uh, characters and stuff like that. So what we're going to do now is, are there any are there any merchants in here? There are some merchants, cool, crafting merchants. These guys with uh, bracketed names above their name are generally merchants, so we can simply go talk to this one. And then we can simply right-click any stuff that we have that we don't want that we can sell. Now, I don't recommend selling raw resources, but we can sell things like this dagger and uh, any excess potions and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and sell all these potions because I honestly don't need any of them at this point of the game. And uh, they aren't worth anything, really. <laughs> so there we go. We get to clear up our inventory and we can use the inventory auto sort to sort that stuff out. Now, I should also keep an eye out for crafting benches and stuff like that because we'll be able to take advantage of those as well. So heading down the road, you'll see that we have a quest over to here, which is the question mark one just over here. But we can grab all these quests on the way through. Looks like we might get a bit shield soon, maybe a relevant weapon as well. All right, looks like that's it for this quest in this little hub here. So just check around town, make sure you grab all of those and you'll get a bunch of quests at once usually and they usually do a pretty good job of leading to each other. Now I've spied a pretty cool looking tower. Don't be afraid to explore in this game. I don't actually know if this will be uh, an explore point, but it's worth checking because basically there are hidden locations and some of them are pretty tricky and there's actually a lot of them around the place. And if you simply get somewhere, oh, it is fireworks. We got Anui's tier, and we should actually get XP, but we didn't actually get XP from this one. Usually you get 1,000 XP. I don't know if that's been changed in a patch or something. But we got Anui's tier. Convert that to whatever currency is relevant for you. But uh, pretty nice to start accruing those. And we simply got that for exploring. So the game actually really re rewards exploring, which I think is a fantastic mechanic. And there's even, it's not just things like going to the top of a tower. Sometimes it's doing things like landing on the, like landing on that with a glider could be a Nui's tier. I, it wouldn't surprise me. 
Sometimes standing on a statue's head is a new East tier. There's a bunch of creative stuff that you can do to actually earn these things, to get these explore bonuses, and it's kind of cool to do, and uh, kind of fun trying to find them all. There are probably some guides online, maybe translated over from Russia and Korean, that you can check out, but there's a lot of them. I reckon it's more fun just to kind of leave them and find them as you find them. I find that most fun myself. Now we have a quest here, catch Amy's chicken. Uh oh, what the? Looks like it's gonna be on the roof here. Yeah, here we go. Simply gonna, this is just like one of the first uh, collect this item quests. Pretty basic. The questing in this game is fa fairly generic for MMOs really, nothing really revolutionary. It's what the sandbox elements that really sets this game apart, but it's still reason reasonably well done. So we can go for, we get a shield with this quest. Now you can't use a shield with a staff. Staff are better for raw power, but shield and scepters can be used together. So I could go a scepter and a shield just here, but I think I'll just go with staff because I want the raw power. Raw magic power, so I'm going to be grabbing Amy's staff here. Uh, what? <laughs> but there we go. So I can go ahead and, and equip this straight away now. You'll notice that if I equip the uh, actual shield, I won't have a weapon equipped. So I'm going to stick with just this staff, uh, Amy's staff. There we go. Getting a bit more powerful. And that'll increase our base magic damage as well. Okay, this next one is uh, a good one. This is a, a use the quest item one. Now, pretty interesting feature of this game is you don't have to go into inventory and search for the appropriate quest item. You can actually just click the item in the quest text here. Like, you literally just click this icon. Now, mousing over this, plant a young sapling before leaving your home village. I am currently in my home village, so this is probably an appropriate location. So, planting this, and if it doesn't work, it means you're not in an appropriate location. But for some reason, I'm digging to plant a sapling. I don't really understand that. But it worked, and we earned we we learn a new skill set and earn two skill points. So, oh yeah, this means we get to pick uh, our next synergistic skill set, which is sorcery. Oh yeah, the one after that will be vitalism for our third skill set, but we get that at level ten. So I'm gonna go ahead and take sorcery. Now from sorcery, uh, you can see, you can get like a preview, so you can actually check out which one you actually like here. The ones with the fireballs, if you're wondering what that are, there are basically suggestions saying that they synergize best with your current skill sets, or that there are a lot of combos between the skills, because you can combo skills from one tree with another tree. So uh, I would recommend if you're fairly new to the game, which you probably are watching this, to pick one of the recommended ones, unless you are following a, a uh, well-written uh, build guide. I'm going to go with Sorcerer anyway because it's the way I'm going for my build. I'm going to confirm. And basically, I don't want any of these skills. None of them are really useful for me. So I can spend one. I'm going to get Enhanced Mana Recovery. Not a bad one to get. And I may as, I may as well just go ahead and get uh, Reprisal as well, the new passive. Because although you could get fire, Fireball or Freezing Arrow, none of those are really helpful in our spec. And I'm going to grab this, saving some respec later. Whereas the passives are actually pretty nice. Increase crit strike chance after receiving critical damage, and increase mana regen uh, by four for every one second, which helps with the, some of the high mana costs of this build. So, continuing down the road, I'm going to use my sprint. You might as well use it as often as you can. It does use your mana, but uh, your mana will regen pretty fast out of combat. All right, Rona, what have you got for us? Reward quest returning? Oh, she does not look healthy. Okay, looks like that's just a head straight to the next zone. Actually, a lot of running in this first area on this side of the fact, on this uh, faction side there. But we'll keep an eye out as we go. <gasps> Hornbeam tree. Oh, it's a complete tree. Oh, yes. We've hit the mother load. Finding wood in this game is very, actually very exciting. Wood is actually extremely valuable and generally pretty rare, especially in the early stages. We actually get a lot of uh, XP from doing it. Whoa, seven logs. That's a good haul. So we've actually done pretty well just there. That's why you always keep an eye out for these things. I guess uh, because this is a beginner area, not many beginners who just come into the game know the value of things like checking those trees or know what actual things can be harvested this early on. So, like, whereas myself there has spied this iron ore vein, and you, after watching this video, are probably also going to know to go for these things. So hopefully, when you when you come through, someone else has watched this guide and they've stolen all the iron and wood already and you get nothing. And I'm sorry for that. Hey, Fortuna Vein, nice. Now there is a chance, a small chance, based on your mining skill, that occasionally a Fortuna Vein will appear underneath a normal Iron Vein. And in this you get rarer uh, materials basically, so you can get copper, silver, gold, uh, archaeum ore, and uh, you can basically get a lot of the really rare uh, high level ones, even some gems and things like that. We have another bounty quest here. We have Kill Hungry Brown Bears and Angry Brown Bears. This one might actually involve some overachieving, underachieving, but this one does have an option. You can kill uh, two different types of monsters, and again, we can click on the map and see in what area these are actually located, but nice and obvious at this point. So we should be able to deal with these guys pretty easy. 
Get wrecked, hungry brown, brown bear. <laughs> oh my. No chance. There we go. Now this skill uh, is one of... There's a couple kind of annoying skills in, in Arc Age. There's this auto-targeting feature. I don't. I hope an option is added for this in the future. Where uh, you have to be careful. When you're attacking uh, one mob and it's about to die, be careful that you don't keep attacking. Because if you keep attacking at the end, you'll actually auto-target another thing and attack it. And if you're a bit low on life or whatever, that can actually be a little bit dangerous. You know, it can get you, get you killed potentially. So you do have to be a little bit careful of that. But it looks like we'll get our three ones. Oh, kill some extra bears and see if we can overachieve just here. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. There's actually a lot of iron ore in this starter area. Actually a pretty good haul. Already nine iron and seven stone. Those will process down. Stone's pretty valuable as well. You get stone as a byproduct of mining iron sometimes, not always. Alright, looks like still no underachieving, overachieving or hidden quests yet to find. Must be introduced a little bit later. But uh, here's Jenny, we can turn in this quest for the killing of bears. I think that was the killing of bears. Oh, apparently we can climb this tree. There you go, there's actually not many climbable trees around. And we, we have found one. Prepare to take some damage! Uh oh. Uh oh. How high can we go? This is gonna hurt. Oh no, this is actually the, the quest. <laughs> I didn't even realise it, but I was doing a quest. I'm gonna jump off, screw climbing down. There you go, we took some fall damage. Thank you, Jenny. We rescued your little bear, I think it was. <laughs> Something like that. I didn't realize there was a quest there. I just, like, I was mashing F anyway and accidentally started climbing up the tree. There we go. We got another cut in quest. Now, following the breadcrumb trail, the breadcrumb trail, it's working nicely so far. So we can get, basically just continue along the road there. And uh, pretty much each time we turn in a quest, we have some more ones to uh, grab as well. Alright, the monolith ghost wants us to collect Velpo's bloody token, so you can mouse over and see what you actually need to do that. Kill members of Velpo's gang to collect Velpo's bloody token, so now we actually know what we need to do to do that. Though, it would have been pretty obvious at this point. But again, this is pretty handy for some of the quests later on, it can get a little bit more complex. Pebble! Oh! Picking up the pebble. <laughs> for what purpose? I have no idea! That's not usually a thing. I don't know, it must be related to some quest around here perhaps. We did acquire a pebble. I don't know what we can do with it. <laughs> There's still mysteries of this game. <laughs> use throw in a straight line. There you go. You can use it. <laughs> There's still mysteries of this game that I have not even uncovered. <laughs> even this early on. There you go. We'll kill a few more of these guys and uh, finish off this quest. I suppose now might be a good point to a time to actually sort of show off uh, kiting. Now, there's, there's two ways of kiting. There's crappy kiting, which is where you run backwards and mobs eventually catch up with you because you're, cra you're kiting crappily. Now, we actually hit the, least li the leash distance just there, where if you uh, take mobs too far away from their start point... So this is very short. Usually, it's much longer than this. Must just be because of this area. But uh, there's, two point there's two ways of crappy. There is the crappy running backwards kiting, but then there is the running sideways like a boss kiting. So the way to do this is you hold down your right mouse button and run sideways. You'll actually see you run faster sideways like that, especially if you can run at a little bit of forward an angles as well, than you do running backwards. Backwards is kind of backpedaling. It's intended to be slower to stop e super easy uh, kiting. So we'll go ahead and tag this guy just here and we'll run sideways. And the easiest thing to do is actually run sideways and run a slight circle around them just by rotating your mouse a little bit, just by moving your mouse left as you go. And uh, that'll keep your distance between them. So using this, you, if you're a ranged character, either using bows or spells like this that you can use while moving, which this is an example of that mana stars. Not all spells can be used while moving. Then uh, you can kill mobs that are much, potentially much harder than you should be able to kill at a certain point. Like you can kill elite mobs and things like that. Super underleveled or achieve quests in high level zones if you like. So I'll tend to get but this stuff's super easy, so I'm just going to stand here and kill this dude. Ah, hidden quest! First hidden quest! There we go, alright guys, officially first hidden quest in the West faction is uh, these Velpo guys. I tested all the other mobs and no hidden quests, but there you go. So, the people of Deserene, thank you for defeating bandits in the Blue Mist Forest. Essentially, I just defeated some extra bandits, and it potentially had something to do with defeating the hooligan, but usually it's just defeating enough of something will give you this extra quest, and we get a bonus 500 XP, so very nice stuff right there. So, I recommend from quests this point onwards, checking by simply trying to kill additional mobs wherever you can. If you are killing mobs for a quest anyway, just kill a few more after you've done the quest. Uh, overachieve the quest if that's possible, and uh, get those hidden quests as well. 
So, uh, pretty nice stuff right there. So that means, that's probably what, like, 5 to 10 quests in? Around that point I would start doing it. Alrighty, here we get a new bow, and we get a choice between a loot and a pipe, or a flute and a loot. Uh, the flutes restore health, and the pipes or loots restore mana. Generally for this character, the, the uh, flute is more helpful. And the flute uh, sound effect is hilarious as well, so... <laughs> That's always, that's always handy. But uh, we can we can equip this straight away and it will increase uh, our base stats. You'll see it gives us stamina intelligence. Stamina gives uh, HP and intelligence gives magic damage, primarily. But uh, it's worthwhile doing that. Now, even though this character is not using a bow, you should always equip the highest level bow available to you that has good stats on it. Now, this has agility and spirit. Agility is irrelevant for, irrelevant for this character style, pretty much. But spirit will uh, actually increase our uh, magic regen, so... Might as well equip that, because it's going to improve our stats. And we have another Farmer's point Coin Purse to open just there. Two silver, 98 copper. Oh, one more money, give me more money. Alrighty, so here we have another item use quest. You can see, Guiding Light, use a Burning Heart on Vengeful Ghosts. Some, sometimes you'll have to get them to low life first. If you mouse over, it'll usually say. And the way to do this is simply take their life bar down below half. But uh, this one just says use, so we just have to get close enough and throw that thing, and we're done. That's pretty pretty much it. It's done. We can go turn it in. Sometimes the mob after that will aggro on you and attack you. Though you, you actually don't have to kill them if that happens. Though, that said, maybe we can kill extra ghosts in here just to get a hidden quest as well. So, we have a choice of cloth armor and leather armor at the moment. It seems like no plate armor option. Plate armor is our priority for this character, but since there is no other, there's no plate armor option yet, I'm just simply going to go with cloth armor at this point. It seems like pretty general armor at this point. You only start unlocking uh, metal or plate armor later on. So we'll go with cloth, because cloth is second best. Leather is the most irrelevant for this sort of character. Again, another choice between cloth and leather armor. I'll just go for the cloth armor here. Pretty generic one. Another quest with uh, a bunch of weapons that aren't relevant for us this time around. You just get kind of spammed with gear pretty early on, and uh, you can just try it on and see which you like the look of. The, like, like, those are radical boots. Look at those boots. Radical. <laughs> so you can kind of just go with whatever you like here. But later on, as I said, we'll, we'll be primarily focusing on plate armor where we can. First quest reward receiving a new is tier. However, we already have one in our inventory. So, uh, easy mode. We got a, that was one with a cinematic as well, which I just skipped there. And next quest leads to a Nui's tier. Now, uh, in the current build of the game, the quests that give Nui's tiers are, could be considered the main storyline quests. Uh, the main storyline in this game is kind of pretty uh, scattered around, though it feels. It's not as direct and obvious as it is in other MMOs that I've played. And it kind of just starts to disappear at a certain point as well, and kind of organically blends into the normal quest. So you'll notice you'll stop getting Nui's tiers somewhere, I think, around level 30. But uh, for now, those ones, make sure you're always at least doing the Nui's tiers ones. But in general, I recommend it's a good way to level up, is just to grab all the quests and the quest hubs anyway. But the Nui's tiers are the super important ones, so try not to miss any of those if you can. So we have using Grave Lodestone near Marion. Simple as this, just click it. Sometimes you may have to select the person first, so actually click on them there. We have Marion targeted, and that's our uh, doing of the quest there. We get another new East tier. Oh yeah. Easy mode. And Mana Star has reached level 3, so we should have a bit more damage there. She's got another quest for us. Oh, spamming us with quests here. And uh, make a monolith ru uh, rubbing at the west monolith. So that'll be in this direction according to our minimap, and this direction according to our arrows as well. And on the map, in this area just here, nice and easy. Sprint. Oh, we have a gruesome scene just here. Gonna be grabbing it and turning in the quest and getting the new East tier here as well. And start a new quest from the corpse. He's a chatty little corpse, isn't he? <laughs> uh oh. Ah, we're talking to ourselves. A spa could. Oh, we can sort of slide around on our knees, I think, because we're supposed to be examining the body currently. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not break character. Let's not break character. Alrighty, we have to get the monolith rubbing. Pretty simple stuff, just pressing F on that one. Good to go. Nice and basic. You should just be starting to get a hang of the different quest mechanics there. There, there are a few other little things that will happen in quests. And then every now and then you'll come across a fairly unique quest as well. Oh, texture bug! There are a couple texture bugs at the moment, and sometimes in cinematics it takes a while for your skin to spawn. <laughs> as you can see, there it goes. It's coming. There you go. No one panic. Ignore the Lady of Darkness in front of you. <laughs> She'll be normal in a, in a little while. There we go. Who are you calling normal? Qu rubbing of the statue. Yay! 
Alrighty, from Shepard Liam here, we actually got one of my favourite quest types. Uh, these generally give you a couple options uh, to achieve the out of 100. Uh, so basically you have to get 100% achievement of this quest, or out of 100, and uh, there's different things you can do. So for this one you can kill sheep ranch bees, or shear Liam's sheep to collect thick wool. This is cool, if you like combat you can just kill stuff, or if you like you can uh, shear sheep if you want to take a more passive approach, and actually completely avoid the bees. Uh, in this instance, so I really like these quests. They give a bit more flexibility and you often spend a bit of time in a zone doing kind of fun things and Potentially achieve, uh, finding more uh, hidden quests and things like that. So on that note I will be killing carnivorous bees because it's more often that doing things like that will uncover hidden quests So uh, we'll go ahead and do that You'll see that uh, different things that you can do for these quests, sometimes there's a couple different options and they'll each give you different percentage progress towards the quest. Killing bees in this instance gives you 20 points of progress, whereas shearing a sheep gives you 10, so you'll need to shear 10 sheep, whereas you need to kill, uh, you know, kill uh, 20, uh, sorry, 5 bees, 20 points per bee, 5 bees to uh, get com quest complete there. So uh, you can pick whichever you think is going to be the fastest for you as well. Bees give you more points, but maybe take a little bit longer to kill, depending on your spec. I like killing bees anyway. Look at that bee, just getting kicked up in the air, juggling him like a soccer ball. Executioner required! Wow, cool, we found a, an actual weapon off that bee. That's an epic sounding weapon to find on a bee. <laughs> also considering, I'm pretty sure it's just a white item. I don't know, let me have a look at this thing. I haven't actually seen this one before. It is just a greatsword. It's a pretty badass looking greatsword though. Check that thing out! Well, that is a very epic greatsword to find off a bee. There you go. But uh, unfortunately, not relevant for us because we don't want to use our greatsword and that'll reduce our magic power. So it won't really give any benefit to us for using magic skills. Aha! Perfect! This is exactly what I wanted to show. Yes! So we're starting to now uh, get the option to underachieve and overachieve. So we can segue into the basically the final lesson for this particular episode here. In uh, arcades, you have a bit of flexibility over how you approach your questing, which I really like. It suits the sandbox nature of the game. If you really like a quest, let's say killing bees is my thing, it gets my rocks off, oh yeah. Then you can kill more bees, even though I've technically got the complete quota uh, status for this quest and can go turn it in, I can continue playing it, continue doing it to get extra progress. So I just killed an additional bee there and I now have extra progress. I can kill another bee now and get even more extra progress up to 50% over the base quest requirement. So let's say your requirement was to kill 10 bees. If you kill 15 bees, you will get the status of overachieving. Now doing extra progress will give you additional XP and overachieving will give you additional XP again. So we're now at 150 out of 100. We've overachieved on this quest. We are we are massive tryhards. We went hardcore on the bees helping the farmer. He's like, wow, you went above and beyond and we'll get extra XP. But you'll see, after I kill this last bee just here, I won't actually get any more overachievement. So that's a, that's a maximum. It caps out at 50%. Now it goes the other way. Let's say killing bees is the worst thing in the world. I can't think of anything more draining and more soul crushing than killing bees. If you absolutely hate that quest, you can simply kill 5 out of 10 bees and then go turn the quest in. You underachieve it. You take an XP penalty, but you get that quest out of the way and you never have to look at it again. So if you really like quests, overachieve. If you want to get lots of extra bonus XP, overachieve. And I do recommend it for a good, fast character progression. But sometimes you'll come across a quest that is a bit too painful to do, takes ages to do, and I like to uh, underachieve those and just move on with my day. So use that feature as much as you can. I like to, I like to use as much as I can. So we get to overachieve now. I'll take the cloth pants again. Overachieve and we get bonus XP much more XP than we would have got before we probably got, would have got like four or five hundred before but we got essentially double and Fancy new pants. We don't have shorts on anymore. We have long pants and we get a little a little baggy two silver 72 copper Fantastic. Alrighty So we're pretty much just going to be continuing on through these different quests here but uh, that's enough for episode 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first basic look at questing. We'll do a fair bit little bit more questing and some of the questing will transition to in some of the other features of the game including mounts, uh, farming and trade runs and things like that in the near future. So prepare to tune in for that in episode 3. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.